Hello everyone, the purpose of this video is to get you up to speed to be able to record experimental data to the correct precision for your practicals. Now, measured data will be data that we obtain from our instruments. Examples of instruments that we commonly use will be a stopwatch and um, perhaps a meter rule. Measured data must be recorded uh, to reflect the precision of the instrument that is being used to measure the data. So for example, for a stopwatch, uh, our stopwatch that we use give us data correct to two decimal places in seconds. So we say that the precision of the stopwatch is 0 0.01 second. So in this table, you notice that the data for time interval is given to two decimal places to reflect the precision of the stopwatches that we use to measure time interval. The precision of a ruler is obtained by looking at the smallest length measurement that a ruler can measure, which is 0 0.1 cm. So that is the precision of a ruler, of a meter ruler. We can also write it in terms of meters, where the precision becomes 0 0.01 meters. Mass is measured by using various uh, weighing balances. So as you can see here, the mass data over here is given to two decimal places. This is because the mass balance that we use gives us a reading uh, precise to just two decimal places in terms of kilograms. Now, let's move on to calculated data. In the table, acceleration is an example of a calculated data. Acceleration is calculated from two measurements, displacement and the time interval. Now, displacement was measured uh, correct to three significant figures. It's, it's not shown here, but the data for displacement, uh, according to the precision of the data, gives us three significant figures. Now, for time interval, as you can see in the table itself, 1.34, 1.43, so on and so forth, all these are data with three significant figures. For calculated data, we record the calculated data correct to the least number of significant figures represented by all the quantities present in the equation shown here. So, since displacement and time interval both are correct to three significant figures, the least number of significant figures will be three, and therefore record all our acceleration data corrected to three significant figures. So, in summary, we record our measured data corrected to the precision of the instrument and we record our calculated data corrected to the least number of significant figures in the quantities used in the calculation. Other details to take note of when you are tabulating your data in your practical will be as such. Number one, notice that the quantities and the units are separated by a slash. Units only appear in the header row and they do not appear later on in your data. The table border lines are drawn using pencil and straight lines. And while we try to maximize the number of data points that we collect to increase the accuracy of our experiments and analysis later on, for straight line graphs that we're plotting later on, a recommended number of data plots will be six data plots. If the graph that you are drawing it's not a straight line but the curve, then you will need more than six data blocks. A typical recommendation which varies according to the nature of a data can range from eight all the way to 12 data blocks for a curve. All right, all the best for your first practical in GH3.